color in our movements or when we're healing in our movements. Or when we peel potatoes, Or, or right? when we peel potatoes in our day-to-day -day movements. Yeah. Embedded in our movement gestalt, mm -hmm. in our etheric body, mm -hmm. are these universal principles of speech and music. Right. Parts and whole. Yeah. So I realized that, oh, okay, so what are the four qualities of etheric movement? Mm-hmm. Because I've only been taught in Eurythmy that there's really kind of only one. Mm -hmm. That's kind of this airy kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and which looks beautiful and it looks beautiful and aesthetic and but it's really just one part and and there's and i and you know because i was a an avid rock climber and a surfer and a skater uh and those activities gave me a lot of joy mm -hmm. and when i finished my rhythmic training i came away from my training thinking that those were all decadent arts those were all yes decadent it shouldn't movement be forms. doing them or something yeah you shouldn't be doing that yeah right because okay. you're because you're inhabiting your lower centers and you're not supposed to be doing that and yeah. somehow that's come across in your rhythmic trainings that that's not a good thing to do well and of course your rhythmic trainings uh, is our trainings and we have to maybe turn that into education centers rather than an art center. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it, we need to bring more science into our art and exactly. more art into our science exactly. is basically yeah. what it comes down to. We have to, to understand uh, consciously what's happening there. What's happening there. And that's what you're doing. Exactly. So, um, so I realized that when I started looking at the slosh effect, mm -hmm. that when I start to, um, to listen to my container, mm -hmm. that, you know, if I, that it's like when you have a, if you have a glass of water, mm -hmm. You know, or you know, I have this cup of tea, right? Right. I can move the, I can move. There's only a little bit there, mm -hmm. but I can move the container forwards. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you see, the the water oh, yeah. lags. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh for sure. And then it oscillates, mm -hmm. and then it, then it finally it comes to stillness. comes to a stillness into a plane. Right. Because you know the the etheric. If you look at uh, uh, the um, the tetractes from Pythagoras, you know, you take three points in mm -hmm. space and you connect the lines, mm -hmm. you create a plane. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's uh, emblematic of water mm -hmm. in this holistic way of thinking. So I realized that, you know, uh, when I, when I, you know, especially if you make a, a really sudden movement, you really uh -huh. thrust, like I did that, you thrust your container mm -hmm. and you let the water, because you, you, you're 80% water. Mm -hmm. If you allow your water to do what it would actually like to do, mm -hmm. it's just, it stops. And then it'll just, it'll oscillate. I'm holding my arms up. But yes. you know, I, I, and so the more you relax into it, mm -hmm. the more you feel your water mm -hmm. to the point where you can't stand up anymore, mm -hmm. which is not practical. But if you, and so if you listen too much to your, or give over too much to your blood and fluidic nature, mm -hmm. then you can't really, you know, you, you're just kind of gooey. Yeah, yeah. But you can, but you, because you have an eye, you can, you can, I can observe it. Oh yes. And that's the oh, thing yes. is that when, when I when I when I take to as a task to observe my water, mm -hmm. it, it it actually it helps to uh, to support my middle, my yeah. eye, yeah. my sense of, of self because it, it it sloshes and I can feel it sloshing through my center, mm -hmm. and that just in, it enhances in the center even more. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. pretty wild. Mm -hmm. um, so I realized that when I added more nerve sense, more astrality. Mm -hmm. To my movements, mm -hmm. you know, then I can I can shunt out the slosh, mm -hmm. and I, and I can make it not have a life of its own. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. I, I found in in day to day life, in, in in a lot of trainings, and what's happening in your rhythm training is that they were they weren't listening to our slosh. They were only listening to the you know, being articulate yes. and, and having all this astrality, yeah. which is n the nerve sense system. Yeah, yeah. Again, I'm working at a holistic, you know, paradigm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So um, I realized that those four qualities then of etheric movement is that, at least, you know, right there alone, there's going to be the watery etheric, which is listening to your slosh. Right. And, and then there's the, there's the physical etheric, which is when you actually come to is to stillness, mm -hmm. is you actually are still moving. When uh -huh. you come into gesture and form, that goes more towards this physical etheric movement. When you add your nerve sense to it, your astrology to mm -hmm. it, you see, mm -hmm. and then you start to shunt out and, and, and conform your, your watery self, mm -hmm. you, that's the airy quality. Mm -hmm. When you become you know, delicate and light, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. appears to be delicate mm -hmm. and light. And then when you add more 
more nerve sense, you become fiery. Yeah. And your movements are, are, are you know, a sprinter is, is calling upon their, their fiery yeah, They're shooting out of the starting line. In order to, but it's, yeah. so the thing is, my premise here is that it's all etheric movement. Yes. Yeah. And, and what I realized is that we're born with this because the etheric is related to our capacity to heal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, when I, if I, you know, if I get cut in my arm, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't have to coax my etheric body to heal. No. It's my birthright. Yeah, it comes. It just it does. I, I can, I can help it yeah. with my consciousness. Yeah. Hang on a second. There's the phone. Can you- it's chilly in here. Well, it's chilly this morning, isn't it? Here in. Yeah. Uh, we should mention where we are. San Carlos, we're, we're at the New Form Technology Research Center. Exactly, and you've <laughs> been and you've been very busy doing all kinds of different um, forms. Yeah, I'm, I'm fabricating uh, a meditation chestahedron. There we go. So you know we're we're busy with all kinds of research things, and there's people coming again. And anyways, we're going to go back to the Eurythmy, and um, uh, maybe you can just uh, go back a little bit. Uh, to, to mention the four different the, ways the, the, yeah, the four dif- that you can experience this. Right, life. so uh, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, um, I was using holism as a tool for my thinking. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so if I'm looking at the etheric body, and, and if, if the etheric body is where our movement body is, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or our life body, like mm-hmm. I was saying, you know, I cut myself, it, mm-hmm. I actually, it, it heals, and we all are given the, we all are given this etheric body, mm-hmm. and it not only, and in the healing, it, it moves, mm-hmm. and that, and that, so our ability to move is directly connected to the etheric body. Minerals don't necessarily move, but plants do. Yes. So you have mineral, physical body. Yes. Uh, plants. Uh, etheric body, mm-hmm. animals, the astral body, and the human kingdom is the fiery kingdom. Right. Mm-hmm. So again, if just using these just in a practical way. Mm-hmm. So there should be, so if I look at the etheric body, mm-hmm. which is the movement body, mm-hmm. we should be able to see four qualities of etheric movement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so there should be a, this, you know, and, and physical etheric, etheric etheric, astral etheric, ego etheric. Yeah, and the, and and that's earth, water, air, and fire. And of course, that's what Steiner talks about endlessly. He talks about also, which is very interesting. He talks about how the, our he gives a clue. You know, he gives a lot of clues to things. Uh, he says that um, our etheric body is our time body. Mm-hmm. And if you crunch that one for a while, you realize that time uh, in music is called tempo. Right. And then if you look at, at these different qualities of movement, you see that, you know, the earth tempo is just very slow. Yeah. And, and, and you can, you can, if you move so slow, you can barely feel the, your slosh. You see, because you, you're, you're just part of everything. There's yeah. not much slosh happening. Yeah. As soon as you start to move a little faster, you see, you can start to feel the slosh. Yes. You can feel how, how you stop and the wave comes and you and you and you, and you keep and going. It comes back towards you and it, right. it crests and it goes and you can and then then you then you can start to give more tempo mm-hmm. and then you start to feel less of the slosh because mm-hmm. you're holding your water in, in check and then and then you can get even more tempo and you can run around and that's the yes. fire theory. Yeah. This is in all our movements. Yeah. Yeah. Which then means you have to access your whole body. Well, you can even observe. I suppose you can um, peel the potatoes in. In either of those in modes, you go really those fast, mo- yes. exactly. Yes. Or you could take it really, really slow and slow. not have any slosh at all because exactly. it's, it's with your container. Yeah, yeah. This is a really important concept. So, so that is a that is a prerequisite to be aware of those of 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 that element. Yes. Th- uh, before you even start. Are you with me training? Yes. Yes. Or an education in what your with me could be. Well, so so now looking at um, those four tempos, I realize that there's gonna, there's 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 four kinds of eurythmy. Yeah. Uh, and right now uh, in in the anthroposophical culture, we have three. We have artistic eurythmy, pedagogical eurythmy, and curative eurythmy. Mm-hmm. And what's happening now is there is this really wonderful lady. Her name's uh, Anna Marie Ehrlich. Mm-hmm. She does eurythmy in the workplace. In the workplace, which is yeah. really sweet. I, I've and worked with her. It's very nice, but you see, it's it's just taking more of the same and bringing it into our, our day-to-day life, mm-hmm. which is great, but it's not actually 
is not actually seeing the science of your rhythm. Exactly. Yeah. So this is what's important is that your stands at the threshold between the astral body and the physical body. Right. And what's been happening for the last hundred years with your is that the rhythmists are have taken a lot of time and energy into understanding and articulating this connection between the etheric body and the astral body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little, little, little or no uh, time has been spent in understanding the connection between the etheric body and the physical body. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you start going into science. You start going into looking at it in a phenomenological way. Yeah, yeah. So I've been looking at your rhythm. Mm -hmm. which then in my you know it means all movement mm -hmm. uh, in a phenomenological way yeah yeah and, and it's more science-based and less artistic mm -hmm. it's and, and and what's what's been ha so what's been happening well, you in, have to understand the elements first yes so what, what's happening is that it that you're with me is incarnating and and, and until we as fellow anthroposophists eurythmists movers start to see and start to uh, proof and find you know phenomenological benchmarks for what a theoretic movement actually is. It, it, it's not going to incarnate, mm -hmm. and it's just going to keep hovering in this sort of state of you know it, 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 you know fire, air, water, and never really hits the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, this incarnation process is, is really important. Um, it's being held back by these old traditions and these old mm -hmm. habits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in other words, uh, there needs to be more expl uh, exploration, not just in the one way they have been doing it, and mm -hmm. which is fine well, and classical, exactly. but uh, now we need to expand. We need to expand and we need to start using uh, uh, our holistic tool mm -hmm. uh, to, to help us uh, uh, ferret out the future of, of, of it. Mm -hmm. um, because that's how Steiner thought. You know, he mm -hmm. used his holistic tool yeah. to understand things in a holistic way, the yeah. parts and whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the whole is history of the earth, the way that he talks about it. All of that. It's all everywhere you look in, in his direction. works. It's it's completely always yeah. keeping back the whole and parts, parts and whole, how yeah. they're connected. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and of course, you know, you one has to be very careful that one isn't mixing, you know, different archetypes and different paradigms. So what, what I've seen in, in, in how to describe how applied eurythmy relates to this fourfoldness is that the artistic eurythmy is the, is the fiery eurythmy, mm -hmm. the fiery discipline of eurythmy mm -hmm. in the sense that it's artistic, it's our self-expression, mm -hmm. my ego, mm -hmm. who I am and how I express my understanding of these universal laws of speech and music. Archetypes, yeah. Uh, yeah, as an artist I can do that and that's yeah. artistic eurythmy. Yeah. And um, I can even show it on the chalkboard. Mm -hmm. I need to bring it down. So I can show you here. Um, so if I have a point uh -huh. in geometry and space, mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, that, I call that fire. That's the ignition point. That's yeah. the, the, the point of, of dissemination, of creation. That's the fire, that's the ego, that's yeah. the self, yeah. the one. Uh, if I were to draw another point in space, then mm -hmm. I can create a line. Right. If I put another point in space, then I can connect those lines and I have a plane. Mm -hmm. And then if I create another line, Mm -hmm. Another point, excuse me, in space, mm -hmm. and I connect all the points, mm -hmm. then I have three dimensionality. Right. I have form. Yeah. And this is the Pythagorean tetractes. Mm -hmm. It's this relationship between four and three, three sides, four points. Right. Fire, air, uh -huh. water, earth. Earth, okay. Okay, so we have in the, in, in the fire, we have the the artistic eurythmy. Right. Mm -hmm. In the water, I mean, excuse me, in the air, which is the, the two. The two, mm -hmm. the way that uh, Frank talks about reversal. I'm not gonna bring that into it right now. No, but. but uh, <laughs> well, we can do that some other time. Yeah. Because uh, there's relationships. 
Mm -hmm. I don't want to confuse it, uh, that no, right here. Just, we'll just so go there, with here you have pedagogical arrhythmia. Mm -hmm. okay. That's that's this that's this that's this yeah. um, me and the world. Yeah. It's yeah. this dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just me. Yeah. And in my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so when when we in the airy way we we share we um, mm -hmm. that's the air. Yep. That's the pedagogical arrhythmia. Um, we have water. And that is the what you call curative year with me. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the healing year with me. Mm -hmm. That's the one that creates the plane, mm -hmm. the water. Mm -hmm. Here in curative year with me, is they, we, they've been working directly with our chi body or our etheric body or our prana or our argon energy. You know, there's so many names for names it. For Vril, I mean, it's, it goes on and on. All these different disciplines have different names for the, this watery body of ours. Remember, it's 80% of our, of our, of our it's being. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's 80% of being. And, and children innately have a connection to their, their watery body when they're very little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yet, uh, you know, our culture is, is really stressing out the, their parents. And then hence, our, their children imitate that. And then they themselves then are, are way too much in their nerve sense, in their yes. air. Yes. And, they, and they can't feel their water. Okay, so here we were at um, the airy and the water, okay? Right, so, so right now, uh, um, so we what, have... what, what's happening in, in the arrhythmia world or the anthroposophical world is that they, uh, the, there's an understanding of these three disciplines mm -hmm. in arrhythmia. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, you know, there's, uh, I think a lady even, uh, Sylvia Bart maybe, has written a book and she talks about, you know, how arrhythmia is threefold. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think Cynthia Hoven did an article in uh, Conscious Dancer some years ago, mm -hmm. uh, an international or national m magazine about dance movements. Mm -hmm. And there again, it, it gets repeated that you know arrhythmia is a threefold thing. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. this this is, is a misnomer. This is yeah, not, it's not enough. No, no, no. Because if you think holistically, it can't be. No. There needs to be a. We form. have to include the earth. <laughs> yeah, we gotta include the earth. <laughs> So we have earth and we have applied, applied you with me. Applied you with me. You see, and it's this connection between our watery self and our earthly self. Yeah. And um, because that's the only way we can experience really from starters because we do have a we do have a physical body. We have to kind of get into that somehow. <laughs> yeah, which also means inhabiting our lower centers. Exactly. And so what's been happening in the anthroposophical society and in the arrhythmia circle is that any time uh, any, any of uh, the etheric movements uh, are remotely athletic or vigorous or sensual or dance-like, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. then the anthroposophists in the rhythmists, are, they, they say, oh, that's physical movement. Mm -hmm. See, and then they, and they, as though it's something that's not good. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and, and, then they, and then there's this tendency towards, in the training centers, to um uh, to pretend that the training centers are going to teach you how to move etherically mm -hmm. like i said it's our birthright mm -hmm. to move etherically mm -hmm. no one's mm -hmm. going to teach you how to move etherically mm -hmm. people can can teach you how to discover your etheric potential yes that you're born with yes but you're not going to train it into somebody no no it's something that you're it's our, like i say it's our birthright yeah that's something you can buy or or, you can't or live. Acquire. You cannot live without it. You can't live without it. You can't and, peel potatoes without it. No, exactly. So you see, this is a, a descent. Yeah. This is descent into matter. Mm -hmm. This is descent into the earth. And mm -hmm. what's happening is that it's it's stuck right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just stuck right here mm -hmm. because there's this lack of understanding of a holistic paradigm mm -hmm. and using holism as our tool to do our spiritual investigation. Yeah. And it's causing a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. been happening is that, uh, you know, people are, uh, your trained eurythmists are coming into classrooms and they're teaching children, you know, artistic rhythmy uh, and, and some curative rhythm exercises through the art of the pedagogy. And there's lots of incredible, important work being done here. Mm -hmm. but what's happening is these children, uh, since there, there's, no, there's no science of eurythmy, there's no seeing it. It, that it, it's these laws of speech and movement are universal and that they are they are it, 